In the last few chapters, you've taken a deeper dive into creating your own models in JavaScript and using existing models via transfer learning. Now, both are very powerful things to know, but sometimes the models you want to reuse might not be in the programming language of your choice. Maybe you saw some cutting edge research come out over in Python and you're curious to see if it will run in the web browser to make that cool idea you had become a reality to millions of people in a scalable way. At time of writing this course, many folk in academia use the Python programming language, for example, and as such, many of those models are stored in the TensorFlow Python model format, which cannot run client side in the browser. As more JavaScript developers learn machine learning, just like you, this may actually change over time, as you already know how to make your own models from a blank canvas in pure JavaScript. But for now, if you want to make use of such research models in the browser, you'll need to convert them to the TensorFlow.js model format to be consumed there. Now do note, however, if you want to use Python safe models server side within Node.js, then no conversion is needed, as both Python and Node are just wrappers around the C++ core, so they do not need any conversion and are interoperable in that regard. Now this chapter only applies to client-side browser model usage. Okay, so what are the benefits of doing this conversion? I mean, why not just keep it all server-side? Well, you've learned at the start of this course some of the superpowers of executing in the browser, like privacy, cost, and speed, as you can execute on device with direct access to the sensors. But in addition, you get the following three benefits. First, you can give your team or community access to a larger range of models and research. Secondly, it could give you access to cutting edge research faster in a form that's more suitable for production. And finally, by converting a research model to JavaScript, you can get more eyes and feedback on that research model, as there's far more people with web browsers out there than there are people who know how to set up and code on a Linux server. So diving into that last point, what if you could get research models into the hands of more front-end users? What we see here is the typical approach needed for server-side environments. First, you must install Linux, then CUDA, install TensorFlow, clone some GitHub repository, read the docs, install the dependencies, and then maybe if everything is on your side, it works and you can run the example. On the web, anyone can visit a website as you've seen throughout this course, and it just works. Even more engineers and creative folk can then start to explore the power of cutting edge research for their ideas in minutes instead of hours or even days and then they can see if it's a good fit for their needs before committing more time and effort to go deeper. Now, many of these potential new users are aware of the new research coming out, but are unsure how to get started. Often, there's a programming language barrier or added friction to usage, as you just saw. And offering a web accessible model could encourage more users to try such a model in their respective industries, even if they're not ML experts themselves, which in turn will drive innovation and new ideas. Now, these ideas and use cases could lead to valuable feedback for researchers, as the industries the model will be exposed to may be far greater than ever before. And this feedback and discovery of potential biases for real world applications could then drive further improvements to the research model itself thus enabling creation of better models further down the line, leading to a positive feedback loop of new research model consumption, industrial innovation and prototyping at scale, which in turn drives new innovations for edge cases discovered. This is in fact how we're working here at Google, which has led to improvements in our pose estimation models, like our MoveNet model, for example, which after launch received feedback from companies in the healthcare industry, who we then collaborated with to produce an even higher quality model that's now available to everybody. Now, in this chapter, you'll learn the basics of retraining and converting Python models to empower you to bring popular models to your fellow JavaScript developers or communities that you might be active in. So let's get started. Mm -hmm.